Right. Well, today we're going to discuss how to properly place leads for an EKG on, on a patient here in the emergency room at our leading wards. This is a very important thing to understand because when we place leads uh, incorrectly, it can give the clinician uh, information that is incorrect. For example, if we place the leads too high in the chest, as I'll show you, it can actually mimic an infarct in a patient who has not had one. So it's very important that not only do we place the leads correctly, but we place them correctly every time. So um, in this instance, we're, we're using a mannequin, but uh, on a, a regular patient, it's also very important to prep the skin, prep the skin correctly, be it uh, uh, with an alcohol pad uh, and in, in a hairy patient to actually uh, uh, shave the area where you're going to place the lead. So in this instance, I'm gonna start with the limb leads. Um, and on the limb leads, uh, it's important that we place that we place the leads on the distal extremities, be it on the hands uh, or on the legs. A lot of people try to get around this incorrectly by placing the limb leads on the torso or even the proximal portion of the leg. It's very important that we place it below the knee and below the elbow. So in this instance, we're going to start with the left leg. Placing it on the medial portion of the left leg, we place the left leg lead. We do the same thing with the right leg. Left arm. Up here it is, it's down here under the... Now it's not, in, it's not uncommon when we're placing limb leads that we switch between the right arm and the right and the right uh, and the left arm. Um, this is very important to get it right because if we if we get these if we get these uh, uh, mixed up, what we'll see is that the axis changes, and that can also give the clinician some some uh, uh, artifactual information about a, a changing status in, in the patient's cardiac condition. So this is the right arm. So I'm going to take that. Place it here. No, I'll let you do it after all. Um, and then I'll, I'll do the left, the left arm. And I'm always checking. I'm always checking right here to make sure that we're placing it in the correct place. So what, now what we have here is is right arm, left arm, right right leg, left leg. Um, that's the easy part. The hard part is getting down the the. Now, when you do this, what you do is, is uh, you're going to place six leads on the chest, and you start by finding the what's called the angle of Louis on the manubrium, which is a, a, a little uh, uh, area where the chest where the two bones of the sternum rise up, uh, and that and that denotes the second intercoastal space. Once you do that. You're going to place you're going to place uh, uh, a lead on either side of the angle of Louis. I'm sorry. You're, excuse me. You're going to uh, the angle of Louis denotes the second intercoastal space. So you're going to go down two intercoastal spaces to the fourth intercoastal space, simply by finding using your fingers to find the intercoastal uh, cartilages between the ribs. So once you do that, you place your V1 lead on the right side. Of, uh, of the sternum and your V2 lead on the left side. The next thing that you do is you actually go down to the fifth intercoastal space which is right below the nipple uh, uh, in the fifth uh, intercoastal space in the midclavicular line. So in a man you're simply looking for the midclavicular line. Um, it's very important. A lot of people with uh, women they try not to uh, embarrass the woman or themselves, so they'll put the lead, so they'll, they'll simply just try to put the lead right here, so it's above the person's bra, and that is incorrect, and what happens when we do that, again, is it changes the morphology, the way the, the QRS looks, and it, it can suggest a change in the patient's cardiac status. So we want to make sure that, that uh, although we try to maintain uh, uh, the patient's privacy, we do this in a correct manner the same way every time. So once we have the fourth intercoastal, I'm sorry, the fourth V4 down, uh, we place V3 simply by going immediately between uh, v, V2 and V4. Once we've, once we've done that, 
we go to the anterior axillary line right here in the fifth intercoastal space to place V5. And then we go to the mid axillary line to place V6. Again, this is very important. If we had not done this correctly, what we would have found is that all of the leads would have been too high. Why is this important? Because the heart is an electrical organ, and the, the, uh, the, uh, these, the electrical nature of the heart comes in vectors. And really, the way the heart depolarizes is from, excuse me, is from right to left, and then from top to bottom. And if we put all of the leads too high on the chest, what we'll see is that everything will still be going right to left, but now all of the vector, all of the electrical activity will be going down to, towards the feet, away from the heart. So it'll look like the patient had a huge anterior infarct, when in fact it's a normal patient. Additionally, some people get a little discombobulated, and what they'll do is uh, uh, they'll, they'll do this exactly the right way, except they'll do it on the right side of the chest. I've seen it done on a number of occasions in my career, and that can really set off alarms that can scare people. Um, so you have to be very cognizant of where you're putting the leads on the left side of the chest, be cognizant of where the second intercoastal space is um, to place V1 and V2, then be cognizant of the fifth intercoastal space in the mid-clavicular line just below the nipple, and once you know that, you know exactly where to put V3, and then you go to the mid, the the, uh, uh, the anterior uh, axillary line, and then the, the mid uh, axillary line, and you know exactly where to put V5 and V6. Done correctly, uh, each and every time, the patient's EKG, will, if, the, if there is no change, will be exactly the same each and every time. And this will allow the clinician to make important decisions that uh, he or she can count on as being accurate. Thank you very much.